Hello. Welcome. Welcome. So in previous episodes, we've been building this CPU from scratch, and we've been making some really good progress. There is one issue, though. In order to do some shifting, well, I have to add the same number to itself. So here I'm adding R4 to R4, and I have to keep doing that in order to shift it a few bits to the left. And that's kind of slow and it's a bit annoying. So I was wondering if maybe today what we could do is fix that and add shift instructions to this processor. So there was some things that I did off camera. I'm not gonna get into them in this episode because I don't want it to get too long. So let's get into this. We have some room in here, but I want to add three different instructions. Shift left, shift right, and shift right arithmetic. So there's only two slots available in here, but actually this move doesn't need to be here anymore. So that would free up a third slot, and that's just enough to implement shift instructions. So what I'm thinking is let's do that. How do we get rid of the move? Well, we have right back over here and rdval is actually not used on this. So we actually have a spare input to this mux. So what we could do is just add right. And I'm gonna move this down. Now, left, right. So we probably want the left and right to be together on the inputs. And let's have, so we've got L out. Let's have right out or R out. Mm. Put this out of here. I think that's correct. That looks correct. All right. Let's go in here and remove this. And let's make sure everything's golden here. Now, all of the tests should fail. And I've got some broken circuits in here again. So yeah, tests fail, but that's expected. So let's fix our microcode. So here, we no longer have a move here. And move is instead on the right mux. Uh, and then move ends up being just writing R to the register, basically. So there is a bit of an issue here in that we need to free up an extra slot in here as well for the shift instructions. So there is a slot in the instruction set architecture for that. So let's see here. I think it's this one. So this is where I originally wanted the move instruction here with an 8-bit immediate. It's currently here basically with only a 6-bit immediate. So if we move it up here, then that will free up this space for the shift instructions, which are right here. And there's only gonna be three of them. This fourth one is probably not gonna be implemented, but so let's do this incrementally though, just to see our tests passing. So I've done this and then uh, jump bars move. Um, Okay, that appears to have worked. Now, will our tests pass? Call failed. Hmm, was not expecting that. Uh, oh, only call failed. Interesting. Why would call fail? Uh, let's see if we can run this step by step and see what happens. So we call four, calculates five, Put one, I think that's actually correct. Uh, yeah, one is what the 
program counter is right now. So that's what should be put into R0. And that is. So this is the jump R instruction. It's jumping to R0. So the program counter should become R. Uh, should become R0, which is 1. So it should jump back to 1. It did not. It jumped to 0. It's not correct at all. Why would that be? I'm guessing it's a problem in the microcode. Uh, where's jump R? Maybe this needs to be L? It kind of doesn't make sense. Um, it is so. Hmm. Why was it even working before? I don't understand. Okay, well, it's easy enough to fix. Okay, here's our instruction. It should be putting one into PC, and it does not. Huh. I think I know what's going on. So it's putting zero in there because, well, it's probably this zero right here. Uh, because the result bus is going to directly to the fetch unit, and it's going before the write back. And it's doing this on purpose, but that kind of messes this up. In this particular instruction, we have RD and RS. RS is hard coded to zero. So, what ALU op could we? use to get the exact same thing if both rd and rs are the same well if you and them together that should be the same right a number ended with itself should be the same so we could use and i suppose sure let's do that and this will have to be rd but the return instruction should work because it's just using that. Okay. So there's our call, there's our move. Jump is now, where's this seven coming from? Huh. Okay, but it says the result is one, which is what we want. And then it goes to one and it halts without an error. Awesome, okay. Run all tests. Yes, this test passes. ALU ops doesn't, but I oh, will figure it out off camera. So I think this should be good. Let's continue. The next incremental change that I wanna do is consolidate these zeros into one part. So I wanna move add up, I think, like that. And this is another incremental change that we can test. So in the microcode, let's remove this one. Add and sub. Uh, there's another fix that we need to do. This is where the subtract is determined. So the first bit is one, and the second bit is zero. I think that's backwards. Zero, one. I think actually we can get rid of this gate altogether because it's just looking at the first bit. So it is one, then it is indeed subtracting. Yeah, that looks good. All right. Okay, our tests are passing still. Awesome, perfect. Okay. So we have room for the funnel shifter. Let's build a funnel shifter. So let's build a new embedded circuit for this funnel shifter. What is a funnel shifter? Well, let's build a bit of a test circuit here. Uh, let's shift a three bit number and we need to split this out into bits. Now, say we want to shift a couple of bits. How would we do that? Well, one way is to 
take a multiplexer and it'll either take the first bit or the second bit and then we can just keep doing that either take the first bit or the third bit and this either takes the third bit or let's say zero Then we've got our output. Hmm. Okay, so we've got a three bit number. Let's say the number seven. Seven's maybe not the best number. Let's try six. Yeah. So if we have the number six and we want to shift it, then we get the number three out. So it's actually dividing it by two, which is really handy when you don't have a division circuit in your processor. So yeah, that's essentially what it's doing is just dividing it by two. So we can change this to say five and we get two out, uh, seven and we get three still, uh, four we get two. So this is quite a handy circuit. The issue then is what if you want to shift the other direction, right? In order to shift the other direction, then this gets a whole lot more complicated because you have to take the bits from the other direction. So we could do that. We could take a copy of this. And on this one, we could take the bits the other way and put the zero in on this side. It's turning into a bit of a mess. Uh, this should be actually different. It should be this or that. It should be this or that. Is that correct? Yeah. Something like that. So, Let's see if this works. Let's put one in here. Yeah, we've got it doubling. Yeah, so we can shift both directions and then we could put a mux on the end to select which of these two circuits, but then we've got all of the circuitry just to shift either left or right, and we can only do it by a single bit position. In order to do this by multiple bits, what we need to do is make this several layers deep. And this gets pretty out of hand. So why don't we just instead, instead of having two different copies, why don't we say we only can shift right? That's all we can do. And actually, if we do that, that allows us to shift left, but there's a special trick that we need to do, which I'll get to in a moment. So then, how do we shift multiple positions, right? How do we do that? Well, what if we duplicate this another time? Let's make this two bits and let's add this on here. Two bits it in, bits out, and this. All right. So what'll happen? Let's say we have six in here. If this is zero, then it shifts it only, well, it doesn't shift it at all. If it's one, then it divides it by two. What'll happen if we increment it again? Huh, that's not what I was expecting. Oh, I know what's wrong. The two circuits are doing the same thing. Let's fix that. It does work when I set it to one extra, but that's not quite what I wanted. Let's make this six and make this uh, six as well. Oh, move this even further down. Okay, so what if instead of this, we take either zero, this one will still be one, and this one will still be third bit. But what if instead, when this one is turned on, we take two bits over? I think that's what we want. Yeah. Hmm. 
make this decimal so that it's easier to tell what's going on here. Uh, decimal and decimal. Let's, let's go with that. Okay, so we've got four. If we increment this, that's not what I was expecting either. Oh, my bits are back. Four. Two, one, and this will shift it completely off. So if we have six and it's going through, then we can divide it by two and we get three, and we can divide it by four basically, and we can get one. Hopefully that's clear. I feel like I'm kind of failing to try and explain this circuit very well, but this shifts by two bits and this shifts by one bit. So you take the output of the two bit shifter and put it into the input of the one bit shifter and you get the combination of those two. So you can shift by zero, one, two, or three places and it'll shift that many right. So this is the principle of the operation. So let's build a bigger version of this. This we have 16 and number of selector bits is two. So what I'm doing here is I'm just doing multiple bits at the same time. So as input to this, what I want to do is have zero to 15 be the first uh, output from this splitter, and then one to 16 be the next one, and then two to 17 be the next one, and three to 18 be the one after that. So then we need a 19 bit input into this splitter and what it'll do is it'll shift it either by um, zero places uh, one two or three right so that is the first layer and this is kind of equivalent to the circuit that we just did except that i'm compressing the two levels into a single multiplexer so then it's doing two levels at once so if we have this level, then we need one higher level. And this takes 19 bits. And this one also has two selector bits. So this goes into that splitter that goes into this mux. And then we need another splitter. And this one is going to do zero to 16 as well as the first position. And then it's not going to be 1 to 17, it's going to be 4 to, so this is not 1 to 15, and then this is 4 to 19, 8 to 23, and then 12 to 27, I think. I'm feeling like this is wrong because this should be 31. Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. I right, gotcha. This is 19. 0 to 19, 4 to 22, 8 to 26 and then 12 to 30. That's better. Uh, oops. And then the input splitting is 31 bits. So at this level, we're shifting by four. And at this level, we're shifting by one, right? So we either shift zero, one, two, or three here. And then on this, we can shift by four, eight, or 12. And then we need an input, and we get uh, four bits input, and we split it out two by two. Uh, and let's mirror this so that I don't have wires that cross over each other. So we've got the first two bits of the shift amount going there, and we've got the next two bits going there. All right, let's test this out with an input. It's gonna be 31 bits. And we've got an output that is 16 bits. And we've got another input, which is our shift amount. And this is four bits. Uh, 19 bits, but 20 bits found. Did I not do this correctly? Zero to 18, oh, whoops. That's right, okay. All right, what's our input number? Well, let's choose that and we can shift it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 positions. And then it shifts off the end. So 
this is the beginnings of a funnel shifter. And it's called a funnel shifter because the input is 31 bits, but the output is only 16 bits. So you can kind of think of it as a funnel. You have a bunch of bits at the top of the funnel, and it um, has only a small number of bits at the bottom of the funnel. So how do we make this useful? Because we want to shift left and we want to shift right. And we also have 31 bits as the input, but we only need to shift 16 bits. So what do we do with that? Well, we have two 16-bit numbers that we could input, and then we output just 31 bits. Let's out a little bit. Call this A, call this B. This is the shift amount. Let's see. So what happens if we, so we can, of course, do some shifting to the right, but what happens if, I'm just gonna set these to decimal to make it a little bit easier to understand. Uh, so yeah, we got uh, 42 and we can divide it a number of times. But what if we wanted to say multiply it by two a number of times? Well, um, it is actually possible to do that. Let's see what happens if we put 42 in here. And uh, I think probably what we want to do is this. So here's 15. And notice that we now have 84 here. We've multiplied it by 2. And if we decrease by 1, now we have 168. That should be multiplying it by 4. And then if we decrease by 1 again, We've now multiplied it by 8, et cetera, et cetera. So what we need to do then is just, if we're shifting left, we just put it on the B input, and we decrease this in order to shift more places. OK. So we now know that we can just swap the numbers around and decrease this in order to get a shift left just by shifting right. So what we could do then is simply to subtract the two numbers, and we already know how to subtract. So let's see if we can do that in order to shift left. Okay, so what if we do that? All right, what if we do this? Let's put our 42 in there. All right, and we have 42 out. And if we do this, we can shift right, and that divides our number out. But let's try changing the direction. Now, we've got uh, multiply by 2, then 4, 8, 16, 32, but uh, one of the issues that you'll see is at zero, the output is not 42 like you would expect. So the fix for that is actually relatively easy. So say we have 42 and we want to shift it right. What ends up happening when the shift amount is zero is it causes the carry bit to go high. And this multiplexer will just select the second input into the funnel shifter. So that's super easy. And then once this is increased to one, that line turns back off. So that fixes that. And we have a 
funnel shifter that can shift left or right. There's one more thing though. What if we want to do an arithmetic shift right? So let's say if we made these uh, sign numbers, say we put uh, minus 42 in here, and then we shift right by one. Oh, look at that. We do not get minus 21 like we're expecting. We get this number here. And that's because a zero has been shifted into the leftmost bit, which is not what we want. So how do we fix that? Well, if we're doing a sign shift right, then we want to figure out what the sign bit is and input that as all ones into this instead of zero. That way we're shifting a one bit into the leftmost bit. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty straightforward. So there's our sign bit. Now we just need to make that extend for 16 bits. Okay, let's try this out. Okay, so if we turn this on, we get minus 21, which is exactly what we're expecting. Minus 11, six, three, two, one, and it stays at minus one. That's not quite what I was expecting. Huh, stays at minus one. Um, why would that be? Because you'd expect it to go to zero. I don't know if that's a problem though. Yeah, I don't think that is a problem. Although it does have me curious as to whether or not uh, other processors do that as well. Hmm. Anyway, that'll be a quirk that we leave in for now until we're certain that it's a bug and then we can figure out how to fix it. But this is basically the funnel shifter and it is basically done and it's able to shift left and right. And I have tested this out in the FPGA and it actually isn't as slow as I thought it might be. I mean, it's just this subtraction circuit, which is a little bit on the slow side, but it's only doing it on four bits. So that's not too bad. And then there's two levels of, well, uh, one, two, three, four, five levels of muxes. So that's not too bad either. So let's integrate this. Okay. All right, so far our tests are passing. Let's update the microcode. So I'm just switching this to be in this instruction slot. So the format for the immediate is one zero zero. So that's here. Uh, and this is going to be an eight bit immediate. And this is just one bit. So it is zero one like that. And then in this case, it's at uh, 1101, and mm, I suppose what could do is do this, since there's going to be two instructions in this slot. So 1101, 
one one zero one. Okay. All right. That seems like that will work. That'll break all of our test cases though. Yeah. Any test case that has move in it and that's pretty much all of them, but I will fix that off camera. The other thing that we need to do then is now that we've freed up a slot is we can put in our shift instructions. And then in here, we have shift left. All right, so we've got our shift left, shift right, and ASR. So let's add some tests in here. So what I was doing before was doing a bunch of ads to do a shift left. So let's see. Well, we can actually just start at one and shift left by uh, 12, I guess. And that should get us that actually. And then shift left one more. And that should be the equivalent of that. And then we add the two together. I think that'll be it. And then don't need to do this anymore, but we could do um, let's see if that works. So we don't have it being displayed yet, but it should take this one and shift it in theory. Oh, the move change. So we moved one into R1, and now we're moving it 12 places, which is 4096. I think actually we want 13 places. Now we're moving, and we're doing one more. Yeah, so we want 13 places. Uh -huh. Yeah, so now we've got 8192. It saves that in R2. I shift a bit more and then move that into, uh, this is not a move, this is a shift. And this is a shift the other way. Uh, this is a move of a negative 42 into R2. And now we're gonna shift it left by one and then we get, or we shift it right by one and we get 21. So that is the correct result. And then we could shift it again and we get minus 11. Okay, awesome. So it's a little difficult to uh, understand. So let's move these around. Let's move now. I think move is now right underneath this thing. Uh, oops, not quite what I wanted to do. So that should fix move in theory. Add in sub. We're moved up one. Were they? I don't think I actually moved those. Sorry, and or and we have shift left. Mm, that's the move, and that didn't fix it. There we go. That's better. Then we have our shift left by thirteen. And we save that and then we shift left another. And then we add those two together. And then we have our shift right. And of course this here is wrong, but we can fix that later. Shift left, yeah. Move minus 42 into there and then ASR. And that put 21 in there, yep, yep. So it looks like everything is working. So, this has been a bit of a longer episode, but we now have shift instructions and we can shift left and right and do an arithmetic shift as well. So yay. I feel like fixing this. All right, there's our shift. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day.